Quick Goal, the official goal of soccer, presents Quick Chat, a quick-hitting interview series with some of the top people from around the soccer world. We discover how coaches got to their position and advice they give to a younger self. Welcome to Quick Chat. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, with us today, we have Phil Wedden, who is the first team goalkeeper coach and the head of goalkeeping for the Philadelphia Union. Uh, on top of that, Phil is the only goalkeeper coach to have worked with both the men's and women's national team. He's got consecutive gold medals with the women's national team in 04 and 08. He's got an 05 Gold Cup victory with the men's national team. And he's worked with some of the top keepers in the game, Hope Solo, Rihanna Scurry, Tim Howard, Casey Keller, Andre Blake, just to name a few. Phil, thanks for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. It's good to be on. Good, good. So we'll just jump right into it. Obviously, you've had a number of stops in your career and, and, and a number of great successes. Can you tell us about the pathway, uh, you know, how you got into coaching and, and how you got to where you are now with the union? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, honestly, it's been, uh, I've been very, very lucky, very thankful for the people that have helped me along the way. Um, you know, I, I was coaching in, in college back a long time ago. Obviously, I'm, I'm no spring chicken anymore. So uh, uh, I just got an opportunity. A, a friend of mine, Ken Pollard, had, uh, had taken a job with uh, the, the Metro Stars. Uh, that's how long ago this is. Um, and, uh, you know, they were looking for a goalkeeper coach at the time. Um, and, you know, I, I just went and did a few sessions. Uh, the goalkeepers at the time for the Metro Stars, was a, there was a young boy called uh, Tim Howard um, and a goalkeeper called Mike Arman, who had just been traded from Kansas. And uh, one, one thing just led to another from, from there. I got some opportunities with um, the women's national team. Um, and I, I believe that life is about opportunity, uh, you know, so I was, was fortunate to be invited back to do different things with national teams. Um, and, and you know, the, the path went from there, you know, it, it, but it all kind of started when I took my licenses, uh, I took my A license, uh, and actually demonstrated in the, unfortunately demonstrated, uh, for the instructor who was Peter Meller. And uh, Peter Meller, uh, who is you know the person that I respect the most as far as goalkeeping goes in the game, um, he's my mentor. He's the one I turn to for all sorts of things. Uh, at the time, he said, "If you get your A license, would you like to be uh, on the instructional staff?" Um, and that just opened uh, another avenue for me. So uh, you couldn't predict uh, the, the the journey as far as going. Uh, from the women's national team to the men's national team and back to the women's national team. And then, uh, you know, ev eventually here I am uh, back in the MLS. So it's almost kind of come full circle. Uh, and I'm working in a great organization with great people. Uh, I work with uh, a, a tremendous head coach and assistant coaches. And obviously the goalkeepers here uh, are great to work with as well. So I'm, I'm very thankful for the opportunities that life has given me and uh, you know, I continue to strive to get better at what I do. Awesome. Even before you got to the Metro stars, how did you even get into the college game? Uh, well, honestly, I was, you know, everyone sort of pursues the dream of playing, don't they? They, 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 you feel like you're better than you are sometimes. And that was definitely my case. Um, but you know, I was playing but just before the MLS started. I was, I was in the A-League at the time, um, and I got a hand injury. And, uh, I mean, my, my passion, had, I, I'd always done coaching. Uh, you know, I have, a, I have a qualification in coaching from England. Um, but I had a hand injury, and, and my fingers just weren't, you know, didn't recover from it. Uh, and it turned out that I actually have a, a tendon disease, and, and maybe... Uh, the amount of times I didn't catch the ball when I should have, maybe that impacted the uh, the progression of the, the tendon disease. But I, I kept having to have hand surgeries um, for, for a while. It was every two years. Um, 
So that sort that's probably not a good thing if you're trying to pursue a playing career. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I just sort of started to focus on on coaching, uh, and I got an opportunity to coach at. Southern Connecticut State University, where uh, I was very, very fortunate to work again with uh, a great coach, Tom Lang, and I worked uh, with the men's program and the women's program. And uh, we, we won two national championships back to back there. Um, and, you know, that sort of, again, helped accelerate the, the pathway, if you like. Very nice. So obviously, like you said, you've been in the game a while, and, and I list off some of the the highlights to you what was your best experience in coaching so far i think it's very difficult to to nail down just one point because there are so many highs and lows in coaching uh, especially as a goalkeeper coach um you know or, or an assistant coach you know it's obviously um going going to uh the olympic games I was fortunate enough to go twice and, uh, you know, I was part of the, the gold medal winning teams. Um, going to the, the, the World, World Cup, the, the Women's World Cup, I went to um, two of those and one Men's World Cup. So, you know, representing the United States at those events is obviously amazing. You can't really put it into words. Um, but there are so many highlights on a day-to-day -day basis when you when you impact the lives of other people, and I think uh, as a coach, ultimately that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to positively impact the lives uh, of of the people we work with, and, and whether it's uh, a professional goalkeeper or a nine-year-old, when you see them performing actions that perhaps um, you've had an impact in, that that's that's extremely rewarding. So then on the flip side, has there been an experience that's been super tough and what did you learn from it or what, what were you able to take away? Yeah, I mean, again, there, there, there are ups and downs and sometimes there's more downs than ups. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there are a number of experiences that I would say shaped, helped shape me as a coach, some positive, some not so positive. Um, and oftentimes it, it comes from um, who you work with and who you surround yourself with. So uh, I've had some experiences where I wasn't treated very well as, as an assistant coach or a goalkeeper coach. Um, and that really impacts, impacts you as a person. And, and, you know, and at times it can impact your life. And, and for me, it did. Um, and you look at yourself. First of all, you know, it's, it's very easy to point fingers at someone, but you know, when you when you point your finger at someone, there's always three fingers pointing back at you. So you've got to look inside yourself first. Um, you know, you know, what could I have done better? How could I have worked better in that environment? Um, are there things that I would have changed? Uh, and then you you learn those lessons and and you move forward. Uh, one of the things that I've tried to do over the course of time is learn from everyone I've been around, whether it's uh, in a positive way or a not so positive way, and say okay, if I'm in this position, this is how I would like to treat the people around me. Um, so again, the, both the, the positive times and, and, the, and the low times um, help shape you as a coach and help shape you as a human being. Is there a player or a group of players that you've had the chance to work with that have, have stood out, whether it be in terms of success, raw sort of ability or or coachability or, or someone who outperformed what you thought they could originally. Some, some cool story or an interesting story about, about players you've got a chance to work with. Um, I, I think, you know, I've, I've been exceptionally fortunate to work with some, some really, really high caliber players. Um, and at times, you know, that as, as a coach, that's been an incredible challenge, um, you know, to work with, the likes of Casey Keller and Tim Howard, in, 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 and, that, and that's a really different environment than uh, working uh, with the women's national team. Um, you, you know, the, these these goalkeepers were at the time were playing professionally in Europe and coming back to uh, the U.S. or to whatever location to train and play for for the country. So, um, I think 
uh, at that time, uh, I learned a tremendous amount from them just based upon their experience of playing either in the Bundesliga or in the Premier League at the time. Um, so, so I learned lessons from, from them. Uh, and again, as a, as a young, well, I say young, I was 30 something at that point. Uh, you know, I, I learned a lot from them. Um, but the day-to-day -day environment of, of the women's national team, uh, because that's what it was before the NWSL, it, you know, uh, there were different, uh, there have been different uh, women's leagues, but we, we were in residency and, and we, uh, you, you basically worked day-to-day -day around um, elite athletes. Uh, so, so every day was, uh, you know, and I might add it was in California, um, so, you know, every day you woke up, the sun, the sun was up, you had, you had nothing really to be uh, uh, ungrateful for. Um, but, you, but you learn a tremendous amount about um, performance and you learn about the day-to-day the -day levels of performance that are needed to win at the very highest level. Um, and I, I'm, again, I'm, I'm thankful for those opportunities uh, to, to learn and grow as a person and as a coach from, from the coaching staff that I was with and also from the players. Uh, uh, you know, and when you talk about a group of players, um, you, you, form, you form a different bond as a goalkeeper coach than you do if you were a head coach. Um, that there's, there's a different level of trust. There's a different level of understanding. Um, and from my point of view, uh, I've tried as best as I can in all the environments I've been in um, to be honest and open and accessible and vulnerable, which is important as a coach, uh, to, to all of the goalkeepers. Uh, the, the group of goalkeepers I work with now, uh, I, you know, on a, on a daily basis, um, I challenge them, they challenge me, uh, and like, you know, in, a, in that environment, I believe that, that you all get better. So, you know, again, to, to isolate a person or a group of people, I think would be very difficult. Um, you know, again, I've been blessed to work with, um, you know, I worked with uh, Tim Howard with the Metro Stars and then with the national team, you know, Casey Keller, and you, and you named Hope and Brian Scurry and, you know, Siri Marnex and Alyssa Nair and all these other goalkeepers. And, and now again, I'm working with uh, a different group that um, come from all over the world and have, and, and have different experiences. Um, I'd be remiss in saying that, uh, you know, I, I was a head coach in college uh, at, at Syracuse University for, for almost a decade. And while the success on the field wasn't high, the, um, the, the lessons you learn about human beings, uh, you know, especially in a college environment, that can be very challenging. Um, and the things you deal with, uh, you know, taught me so many lessons and I'm thankful for everyone that, that I came into contact with at Syracuse as well. And then you're looking at your week, right? You've got all these high-level keepers, and you're looking at your week and how you set up a training session or, or, or a week, you know. Uh, do you have any sort of favorite training games or exercises or warm-ups that you are doing regularly with these with the, all these high-level keepers? That's a great question. I, you know, it, it varies from, from week to week. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, we uh, – we, we do try at time if we've got a week between games then then there's usually a uh, one or two light-hearted warm-ups um, probably the the one that gets most competitive is uh, we have an air tom in the middle of us there are four of us around this this air tom and you have one touch with the hand and one touch with the foot so you control it with your hand and you, that you play it at another person. Um, and let's just say that I, I don't often come out on top in that <laughs> game. So, so uh, we, we do that quite often. Um, but I will say that, you know, we, we do also have fun around uh, whether it's the end of training, uh, the end of pregame warmups, uh, you know, we'll, we'll play crossbar. Um, sure. You know, and I'm not afraid to say, and I'm sure that 
the goalkeepers here will, will see this. Um, so I, I will say I am, I am currently the crossbar champion. There you go. Uh, so, so I didn't get a trophy for that, but you know, I'm, I'm working on that. Um, but, but, but the exercises we create here, um, as, as far as a day-to-day -day or a favorite one, uh, they're, they're all based around the game. They're all based around what, what are the goalkeepers going to see um, it, in a game environment. So whether it's just where the angle of the ball is coming from um, or is, is it a crowded penalty area, you know, where, where is the ball being served from? Uh, and we build, it, build our sessions uh, based upon uh, the outcomes that the goalkeepers are going to see. Um, so, as far as a favorite session, I would, I would say that there isn't really a favorite session, um, but all of our sessions are geared towards what, what happened in the game before and what are the goalkeepers going to see uh, in, in the coming game. Um, and I think that most coaches would probably operate in the same way. Sure. So then just to wrap up here, uh, we know you got some, some things to do this morning. Advice for a younger Phil Wett. Are you trying to say I'm old? No, 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 just younger. Okay, younger. It could be last week. Okay, oh, well, last <laughs> week I would say let, let's not lose to New England, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. The, uh, no, honestly, um, be more open uh, and be less dismissive. I, I think uh, as coaches, and, and uh, when, I, when I say as coaches, I mean as goalkeeper coaches in particular, sure. We're very dismissive of other people's exercises, other people's uh, methods, without knowing the why. Uh, and I think for coaching, you know, if, if you can, if you have a why you're doing something, then it has a purpose. Uh, if you're striving towards a specific outcome, then it has a purpose. Um, year, years ago, I, I would be more along the lines of, oh, that, you know, I wouldn't do that. That that doesn't work. That's not. That's not relevant, and so on. Um, and, and it takes you time because because I feel like goalkeeping, goalkeeper coaching in particular, is quite cutthroat, uh, and people are very very quick to put other people down, um, and, and myself included. Like I said, and it's taken taken me it took me some time to actually open my eyes a little bit. I, mean, I still seek advice uh, from from coaches on on coaching goalkeepers uh, and. Uh, and the art of coaching itself. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I had conversations this weekend. So I would say uh, for a younger me, be more open, be more understanding, ask the question why before you judge. Sure. And then what else, uh, you know, you, you mentioned the loss. Uh, sorry for that. But, uh, you know, what else do you have going on besides the union right now? Uh, well, obviously, as you know, um, because I'm very proud to be sponsored by Quick Goal and being a brand ambassador, um, I run GK1. Um, we have the International Goalkeeper Coaches Conference. Unfortunately, we weren't able to be live this year in person in Florida at the IMG Academy, but um, we, we're doing a number of things just to try and educate goalkeepers. You know, the country is striving, uh, you know, is crying out for goalkeeping education. So uh, I've done a number of free Zoom calls. There's another free Zoom call coming up uh, next Tuesday uh, where we'll talk about the core elements of goalkeeping. Um, we're just trying to give out information uh, through, uh, through the platform created by the International Goalkeeper Coaches Conference. Uh, I think where, where can they find the information? Uh, where, where can listeners find the information on that Zoom call? Uh, on the Zoom call, well, no, it'll be all over Instagram and Twitter, uh, and it'll also be on our website, internationalgoalkeepercoaches.com. Okay, cool. Um, uh, you know, again, it's just about trying to fill a void, um, and the, the things that I'm trying to say aren't necessarily right or wrong, but hopefully they provoke thoughts. Um, and people start to ask the question why uh, a little bit more often. Awesome. Phil, thanks for everything as always. Appreciate the time and uh, we'll catch up soon. Thank you very much, Tim. Pleasure talking to you. Have a good one. You too.